All right, draft orders. Draft orders are designed so that when someone calls in, maybe they've been messaging you on another platform, WhatsApp or uh, Facebook Messenger, you've got something going on and you wanna create an order for a customer. You wanna do all the, all the hard work for them and just send them a link that they can click on and check out. Well, that's what's gonna be happening on draft orders. So let's hop over to my dojo and let's have a look at what's going on under draft orders. Now, the draft orders uh, dashboard is gonna be very similar to the orders draft board, but you will notice it's missing the, uh, the live update. Obviously, there's no live update for draft orders. These are just things that are happening. You still have the option to go and export your orders. Same exact options that you had underneath the order page, which was you know current page, all draft orders selected, draft orders by date, and um, select a draft orders or and the ability to do it in both CSV and plain CSV. Okay, so that's for that. The next piece, this is the uh, the filter. Again, this is exactly the same as on the order page. You can create your own views. You can save your own views. You can do whatever kind of uh, filtering that you want. You do have less options on this page because there's less options when it comes to a draft order. But more importantly, what we're going to do is we're going to jump right into creating our first draft order. So we're going to go click on the right hand side and we're going to go create draft order. You know what? Let's go and show you what I did there. So in the top right hand corner, we're going to hit create order. Great. Now we're into creating an order. Now they have this black bar that comes across the top. Anything that you do with that black bar in there without hitting save will be discarded. So um, this allows you to play in a sandbox. It allows you to put the things together. You can go and do that. If you don't want to save any of it, just hit discard and away you go. So we're going to go and create an order. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to add an item. So we're going to go browse, we're going to go to all products. Um, and I believe there's an Adidas classic backpack in here. Great, we're going to go and add that in here. Now it gives us uh, some helpful information. It tells us how much is available and what the price is. Um, once we have gone and selected that item, we could select multiple items if we wanted. So let's say if we want, uh, Let's go an Adidas Kids Satin Smith, uh, size two in white. And we're gonna add both of those to our order. And as you can see, it's now started to populate our order. So what we can do is we can go and build out an order for a customer right on the web page. So say you are in your, um, your retail space and someone was like, hey, I wanna buy this thing. And they're like, hey, we don't have it uh, in store, but we do have it online you can actually go and do this straight through the dashboard for them and away you go. Uh, the first thing you would wanna do when you do that is you wanna go and select the customer. You can go and create a new customer directly from the dashboard or you can go and select an existing customer, search them by email address and they will come up. Um, you've got the ability to reserve some items. So what you can do is you can go and reserve an item so that it pulls it out of the inventory so it's not available on the inventory um, until a certain time. So say someone's called in and it's like, hey, can you reserve this? I'm coming in to pick it up. You can put it on reserve um, and then it won't show up in the inventory on your online store so people won't be able to go and check it out until you put in the restock time and that will restock it back out. Really nice feature actually to have that. Um, we can add custom items. So say you know, you're know you doing a, a special favor for someone. Maybe you are um, re-lacing um, Nikes. Maybe, you, maybe it was a little bit more difficult and needed to charge them uh, 20 bucks to do that. You can go and create an item name. It's not gonna create a product for you. Um, it's just going to add it to the order. So we can go done. And now we have a custom order that's been added directly into the draft order. Now, one of the things that might not be immediately obvious is if you wanted to override a price. So you can click on the price and what it's gonna do is it's gonna have the ability to give you a item level, an item level discount. So this is not a order discount for the total order, it's for the item specifically. So you have amount that you wanna give it a discount or a percentage. So say I wanted to give this person 15% off, um, the world's best customer discount. Okay, apply that. And what it's going to do is it's going to apply that to that specific line item. Now, say they had an additional discount and they had a VIP discount. We can go and do a VIP 10% discount 
and it's going to apply it to the whole order. So you can actually stack discounts in this kind of fashion if you're using the draft order. Now there is ways to do this through the drafts order API. That gets into a little things that are a little bit more complicated. We're not gonna do that in this lesson. All right, so we have our discounts. We can go and add our shipping. We can add our estimated taxes and we have our value of the total order on the side. We can go and select to pay later. So we can go pay due when the payment is due. Now keep in mind, this is not an accounts receivable. This is just a payment due. So it sends a reminder when it's time for it to be paid. Okay, um, coming back up to the top, just quickly to go through the different items. We have the customer shipping address that was pretty similar on the orders page. We now have markets. Now Shopify markets, there's a special section in this course that we're gonna talk about markets, but it's a place for you to actually uh, put your products on those markets. We are not going to modify this in this one, but we can change which market they're coming from. So if you have a number of markets um, where you're um, selling stuff, you can pull the item from that one, or you can attribute this one to that one. If that makes sense. You've got the ability to add notes, so notes to a specific draft order. Um, and then again, we have the tags. So we can go and add a tag, uh, final sale, now I'm gonna mention something. I know I added final sale earlier when we were talking about orders, but tags are, scope, are scoped. So tags for draft orders are not gonna be the same as tags for products and are not gonna be the same for tags for uh, uh, customers. So each individual module has its own scope of uh, tags. Now you can use the same tags across each one of them. There's no conflict or anything like that. You can use them to tie things together if you want to, but just keep in mind that if you've added a tag to a product and then you go to draft orders, you're like, why is it not coming up with the tag? That is why. Okay. And then once we are done, we have the option to collect payment. We can go and enter in a credit card again, because I don't have payment set up on this particular item. It's not going to give us option. And then we can go mark as paid. Uh, we can also send an invoice. So sending an invoice will uh, connect to the customer, give you the option to go and put in their to address, who it's from, subject name. And there is the ability to change templates, but we're going to go over templates and notification in a later module. All right. So I'm not going to actually go and do that after you have gone and done if you've, if you've gone and sent send invoice, it's going to automatically save it for you. So as you can see, that black bar disappeared, uh, turned into the search. Um, and what that now allows me to do is it actually gives me a share button. So after you've saved it, now you have access to the share button. So this link that is created, you can actually go and share this link on other networks. So like so you can share it on email, you can share it in Messenger, wherever you want. And then when someone clicks on it, it's going to take them directly to the checkout. It's going to put together their entire draft order and give them a very easy way to just say bye and then go from there. We use this a lot in my own business. It's, it's, quite, it's, it's, uh, it, it's quite useful. It really makes things a lot easier. After you save the thing, that's when the timeline comes up and we go from there. All right, so that's an overview of orders and drafts. Next up, we're gonna go over abandoned checkouts.